Hello, it's Dawn, and this is Dawn Versations. I'm so happy to have you here. We talk about anything and everything. It's just a potpourri of topics, and that's just the way I like it. If you like surprises and you like variety, this is the show for you. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Lisa. Welcome, Lisa. I'm so happy to have you here. Dawn, I'm so excited to be here with you on your show. You have such vibrant energy and I'm just happy to connect. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. So you have a laundry list of things that are your credentials. Um, but what stuck out to me was your book. You're the author of The Chiron Effect. Yes. Tell me, is Chiron a planet? So Chiron in astronomy is designated as both a minor comet and a planet, and it's had some changes over the years from when it was first discovered in 1978. It was designated as an asteroid at some point, but the current designation is both as a minor planet and a comet that is has an odd elliptical and oval-shaped orbit between the pla- planets of Saturn and Uranus. And in astronomy, it was the first of the centaur class. It was the first heavenly body discovered that had an odd elliptical orbit versus a round one and was named after Chiron, the Greek centaur of healing and therapy and of medicine. Okay. So what got you interested in Chiron to begin with? Because I know I just did and an episode with somebody that was into astronomy and astrology, and she liked to deal with Saturn. That was where she felt like people could find out their life path and all of that stuff. So why Chiron? It's so interesting. Well, Saturn speaks to our limitations and, and meaning our, in my, in my experience, like our thought limitations, the beliefs that we have, and that's as far as you can go. You can only go as far as your largest limiting belief. And if you sit with that for a second. Yeah, that blew my mind. Say that again. (laughs) We can only go as far as our largest limiting belief. So it's like a block. You know, I don't like that word block because I I feel like it's really, it feels like you can't get out of it. I see it more as these are just thoughts. These are just the thoughts that we think create our beliefs. And those are kind of like these invisible yet moving, um, like parameters around us. And so I don't want it to be as concrete as a block because that feels like something almost insurmountable. I see these as really like moving paradigms, moving belief systems. And if you think of yourself as your beliefs change, your paradigms change and your life can get bigger if you want it to get bigger. And there are times when we might want to have more privacy. And so we want to kind of close down a bit. And so I see it more as, as like us moving as these energetic beings based upon the thoughts that we think that create our belief systems. And then those beliefs that we have inform our behaviors, the the actions we take and the things that we don't do, the things we reserve ourselves. Does that resonate with you, John? It does. I am so curious if this is something that's laid out for us for moment of birth, or if this changes as time changes, like how, how does it work? So in, again, in my, belief system. And in my experience, when we're born, there is that astrological chart that we're all familiar with. And I used to feel very limited by that and kind of resist. Like you're telling me the stars are saying blah, 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 blah. And no, I had this download on that I wrote my birth chart. And so did you. We chose these patterns of thought, these patterns that our lives might be taking right now from where you're listening from. And the most awesome news is we can change our patterns. They're just a thought away. So nothing is dictated or limiting us at all. It's it's that we chose before. I know I don't remember when I decided I'd like to experience this, this, and that and have these parents and, mm-hmm. and overcome these things. I don't consciously remember that. Some people do. But ne- what I do know is that the things I want to experience, I can gain the skills to start experiencing them more in my life and release the thoughts of like, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not lovable. 
I'm discarded. And that's what Chiron reveals. This placement of Chiron in your birth chart reveals one of 12 thought patterns. Like Chiron and Aries has to do with this thinking around your value and worth. Chiron in the sign of Taurus has to do with neglect, ways that you may have been neglected growing up or ways you might be neglecting yourself today. So I actually see this as core wounding and vulnerability on a spectrum that Chiron illuminates for us, that for some of you, this might be like a little ouch. You just feel vulnerable in certain areas, maybe around your self-esteem or your body image. Yet for other people, this is a a more deep core wounding where you've created some real patterns of thought and beliefs that are you feel held back by. You might feel a little depressed, in fact. And it's through identifying and then changing our thought patterns that I believe we can heal and grow. Okay, I have two questions and I don't yeah. want to forget one, but do, it, does Chiron have, is that equal to karma? You know, Are karma, they... I have a little bit of a, a hard time with because I think people usually use it as this very rigid yeah you know, like uh, awful thing, like Mm -hmm. bad things are going to happen to you. And I believe in a loving and supportive universe. And I believe we live the effects of our belief that the beliefs that we have about our health, our body, our habits, the things that we eat, drink, watch, speak, it's pretty obvious when you look at somebody, we're living very directly the effects of our beliefs and our thoughts. And Maybe you can call that karma. I I don't personally really embrace that word. I think more of like what you put out comes back in an energetic way, but it's this constant feedback loop and it's not an instant manifestation, thank goodness. So we can have awareness, like maybe we're angry one day. We don't want all that to come back and hurt us or our loved ones and neither does the universe. So we have this buffer of time to kind of clean up our thoughts if we want to and, and maybe work through that anger in healthy ways, work through our hurt in healthy ways so that we're not harming others. Mm-hmm. It, how does that land with you? Yeah, I think karma is a word that's been overused and probably used wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the too. way that I was interpreting it seemed like the same kind of definition when I was reading. I was reading it last night about mm-hmm. Chiron, the Chiron effect, and and karma to me they seemed like they were either related or s- somehow in the same realm but so when i was reading about it i put in my birth information yeah um does it matter what house it's in or is it so, solely just the sign well if you know your time of birth that will mm-hmm. reveal one of the 12 houses right. that your chiron is in and that simply speaks to the area of your life that chiron vulnerability manifests, but you pretty much know that by knowing where your Chiron is. Does this manifest in my professional work life or does this manifest within my own two ears and my self-esteem and mm-hmm. and things people don't see outwardly? Where mm-hmm. Where is your Chiron? It's in Aries in the 11th house. Okay. So in the 11th house, it speaks to, and let me just check here in my chapter in the houses to be Accurate. The eleventh house has to do with groups, associations, friends, social justice, and humani- humanitarian causes. So, and Chiron in Aries is this vulnerability in your sense of value and worth. Do you feel? Have you had issues with finding groups, friends, and associations that you feel really plugged into and seen and heard, or has that been somewhat of a challenge? Hmm. I guess in general, I've always had like a wide variety of friends. You okay, know? so that's they, awesome. Yeah. Um, back in grade school, I went through the whole bullying thing. Not okay. me. <laughs> yeah, you being were, bullied. Yes, yes. Um, but only for a short spell. Otherwise, I feel like I have always had little pods of friends and and social connections. But this this time in my life. I think it would be awesome to, and I am with every podcast episode meeting more and more people that are interested in the same things I'm interested in. They're just not people that I hang out with on the daily. Right. And that's what I was going to say, Dawn, is that the way that you've created your podcast to connect you with people that are like 
hearted and minded and creating this community virtually, that's healing. You've been healing this placement of Chiron and even in your diversity of friends. That's what I suggest to do with your placement is to find diverse friends and activities that mirror the various aspects of you because you are multidimensional and it might not be a person or one group that really satisfies your very active mind and curiosities and diverse interests. Is Mm -hmm. that true? Yeah. Oh, very true. So is it completely in sync with your actual sun sign too? You know, sun sign is different. Your sun sign is different than just like your moon is different Mm -hmm. than your sun sign and rising. Chiron is its own individual placement in the same way. When you meet somebody, can you Mm -hmm. tell where their Chiron is? (laughs) Like how you can sometimes with the sun sign? You know, not as obvious. It's not as obvious unless I'm the person's therapist and really working with them on the issues that are coming up that I start to feel a sense of where their vulnerability or or wounding in their belief system and thoughts about themselves could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't even introduce you saying that you are a therapist, but Lisa is a therapist. So do you find out people's birth? chart information before you meet with them just to kind of see or is that totally you know, I usually separate. don't start there because I usually want to meet somebody and and find out where you are exactly right now like what's important to you what brings you to therapy and then at the right moment I'll ask hey I'd love to look at your Chiron placement I think it might help you with this issue in particular could I have your I always get a date of birth when I anyone I meet with but a place of birth and a time of birth if they mm-hmm. have it So I can just look into where their Chiron is when it really fits in to being helpful for them. Right. Is it, um, does it matter what type of astrology that you're dealing with? Is it the Western astrology or is it Vedic or? Well, you know, I'm not an astrologer and I talk about that in my book. I bring psychotherapy. So for me, Chiron is the diagnostic point to go into psychological and therapeutic perspectives of somebody's experience. So I have a in the back of my book, some astrologers I really have enjoyed working with. So if you want the astrological deep dive, there's that for you, as well as so many astrologers available. Right. But I come to this work as a psychotherapist. That's fascinating. Did Thank you, you did it make you want to delve into astrology once you started learning all of this stuff? Well, the astrology for me, it's it's such a beautiful symbolic language and it's its own thing. And I did go to astrology school for a little bit in Los Angeles. I took some classes, but it was it was a bit overwhelming. And I feel like I'm really excited to to do what I do and offer that. And in another lifetime, I'm sure I would combine more astrology. But there's so many people that do that. Well, I'd rather just refer to them and like keep doing what lights me up, which is helping people to identify these thought patterns that you might not even be aware of. And I think it's helpful to look at experiences in your life. I walk you through that in the beginning of the book, times where you both felt loved and times when you didn't. And most importantly, the meaning you made about yourself, because that's where the the thing, like kind of the, the source Fracture, as my friend Catherine Woodward Thomas calls it, she wrote Conscious Uncoupling and Calling in the One. We make meaning of ourselves when these big things happen in our lives. And often it might be something that minimizes us, like we're not good enough. A relationship ends and a person calls you names and projects all their unhealed issues onto you. And we're left feeling if we don't have healthy self-esteem, like, oh my gosh, like I don't deserve love. And that couldn't be farthest from the truth. And in that moment, I don't deserve love. It creates this whole set of kind of unseen then behaviors and and choices that we start to make. We might shut ourselves down to love or we might become afraid. We might build all these walls and and not want to have intimacy. And so it's really important to my book helps you walk through. And I do this with clients like. What beliefs did you make about yourselves when some of these big things happened in your lives? And is it what is it what you want to continue to believe today or might we change this and start to heal that part of you? I think that's what the Chiron effect really is. It's so fascinating. And I was just talking to my husband about that the other night. And I said, you know, just because we 
believe it or think it enough times, we assume <clears throat> it's true. Yeah. And we are our own worst enemy when it comes to that. You know, and that's crazy to me to think that the whole trajectory of your life could <clears throat> be different because of the way that you were thinking. And had you thought differently, you could but, be on a different track. But you know what? That time is now. We're also our own best friend. So don't dwell too long. And the worst enemy and coulda, shoulda, woulda. No, you are exactly. We are exactly in the perfect place to have the awareness right now to make the changes. Often we're not re we weren't ready to do it sooner. Other things had to unfold in our lives to be at the point now to actually be ready for this information, be ready for the self accountability piece because that for me at a point in my life I wasn't ready to be self accountable for maybe how I showed up in certain relationships and how my wounding was so deep that it almost like created what I didn't want because like I felt so unworthy and unloved and I hadn't adequately healed enough to get to a place where I know I deserve more and better. So I can actually say some things differently. I might not, um, you know, be so people pleasing or so self deferring, you know, whatever you want, oh, whatever makes you happy and all the ways that we might do that as women. No, I might have known myself better. Like I know today and been like, you know what, if you want to do that, fine, but that doesn't really work for me. You know, let me know when you might want to do X, Y, and Z from like an empowered place and not like a wounded place or a manipulative place. So I think sometime we need to live more life before we're ready to actually heal some of the dynamics in our lives and, and take responsibility for our little portion even. That was. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was so great. Jeez. How inspiring. How, how, um, yeah. That just giving people the control back. Yeah. You're in control of yes. where things happen right this minute. And that is right. so and where empowering. they're going to go and where they're going to go yeah. today, tomorrow. And I really believe if we live as good of a day as we can, like today, trying to be as focused and mindful and less distracted. I used to feel so happy that I could multitask. And now I like to try to try to do one thing at a time. And because when I multitask, I, I'm forgetful. I've thrown checks away. And so I, I don't know that being so super multitasking is really the way right now to be like to be more mindful and thoughtful so we can actually enjoy what we're doing more and and not that I do that perfectly every day but I try to I try to take things a little bit slower right so is that what made you get into therapy to begin with was because of your own struggles it was absolutely Dawn I started therapy when I was 21 I had two friends in therapy with a woman named Marilyn, a licensed clinical social worker in New Orleans, and they raved about her. And they're like, we think you should, we think you should go. You know? <laughs> and when a couple of friends are like, maybe you need therapy, you might want to listen. So after, I don't know if it was months or a year, I was like, okay, I trust these, these women. I'm, I'm going to go. And Marilyn really helped me. I knew like, this is what I want to do with my life. Like I want to help people understand themselves more. I want to be a soft place for someone to land, to work out some of the ways they, they've they been wounded and vulnerable and, and like help them heal themselves. Like Marilyn was helping me. Right. Yeah. What a rewarding job. Thank you. Seeing the progress that you it can is. make in people's lives. That's just amazing. And you have had some amazing guests on your podcast. So thank you, Dawn. Lisa's podcast is called, I wrote it down, All Things Therapy. Yeah. And you had, let's see, Marianne Williamson, yeah, Dr. Daniel Amen, John Gray. Did you yeah. talk about the love languages with him? With, with you know, so John Gray was so lovely. He was such a nurturing and humble and authentic guest. He wrote the book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. And he came on my show to talk about his second book, which was like a new evolution of that beyond Mars, Venus. And it was interesting because he talks about kind of the, the physiological things in the brain going on behind particularly men and women and very in the binary around how men and the man cave, like why that's a thing. Mm -hmm. And for women, the connection and the, 
the desire to talk about things, just how men and women, and in the most binary sense, recharge and regenerate in different ways. And in his experiencing seeing so many couples over the years, straight heterosexual couples, that you know, this is some of the dynamics. And I asked him to speak to the LGBTQ community about, you know, the energy of couples and gender. And and he did, he was so happy to do that. And so the work really applies to anyone. He was just a lovely guest. I can't Gosh. say enough about yeah. how kind. I would love to pick his brain. He seems fascinating. Yeah, and he is. And then Marianne Williamson, did you talk to her? Was this a long time ago or was this around the this time? This was in this was in 2016, so before she's run for president okay. a couple times, but she's always been a mentor. I used to go see her here in Los Angeles. She did a Monday lecture at the Saban Theater for years about A Course in Miracles, and I used to go every Monday, and I got to meet her in the restroom, and it was before <laughs> I even started a podcast, and I said, if I started a podcast, would you come on it? And she's like, well, email me, and you know, I'll think about it. So I went home to New Orleans and I emailed her and she said, yes, I didn't even think she was going to answer me back because she gets so many emails. So right. I was like, oh my gosh, holy shit. Now I have to start a podcast. <laughs> and so, yeah, so that's how that happened. And I just love her work and, and just, she has been such a light to help me understand that the deeper, like the shadow, you know, the parts of ourselves that we tend to hide or edit and don't really want to look at and how that can create some of the things we don't want when we don't take those parts of ourselves out into the light and really love. Those are the our parts and aspects that need, I think, more gentleness and love rather than 100%. punitiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Return to love. I love that book. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I have back here, A Course yeah. in Miracles. Yeah. I, you know, once in a while, I'll just like open it to a random page and just see if I it speaks too. to where I'm at in my life. It's, it's a lot. It's kind of mind I did that blowing. Too. It is mind blowing. Yeah. I did that last night. Yes. I, but I, I like, right I liked how tangible she made it seem and how she was so um, vulnerable and raw yeah. about her talks about her own experiences. Yeah. That's what made me just like really love that book because it was really more about her, her struggles. And she was willing to put that out there. And that's so yes. brave. It so is brave. brave. So, so brave. do you want to write another book? You know, Dawn, right now, I feel like I will at some point. I don't have that desire in this moment, but I know I'll know what it feels like because when I wrote this book, it took almost three years and yeah. it was like such a project. I feel like I was birthing a child because <laughs> to, to carve out the hours every week to write, oh, I tell yeah. friends and family that I was seeing clients. When I wasn't, I was writing because I needed that accountability to validate the time and show up for it. And it was so intense and wonderful, but I don't feel led to do that right now. Oh, I look up to authors so much because to have it up here is one thing, but right. to do it and all the tireless nights and, you know, putting it all pen to paper, it, I couldn't imagine you know, laying it out to make it so that people actually enjoy it as a, you know, a good read. I just think it's amazing. So Thank kudos. You. good job. Thank you. Um, what are you most passionate about right now? Like where, what it gets you excited when you get up in the morning? Gosh, that's a good question. You know, I've really been, and it might sound a little abstract, but just finding my freedom, finding my joy, like, and even in, in the clients I have today, for example, and meeting with you, like, I know I have these things on my calendar and how do I approach them from a place of like a true, like I get to do this. I'm happy to do this rather than feeling bogged down or tied yeah. down to my work or a schedule. And so that's really been my focus, like how to, um, how to find some real joy and, and true desire. And like, I get to do this. So my work stays meaningful and because sometimes I do get tired, like last oh, night yeah. I was up late recording a podcast and, you know, sending it to all the places and feeling a bit worn down and like, I, oh, not, I, get I it. don't know that I want to do this. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Like, I'm definitely over functioning when I feel that way. So I've been I've been seeking some more balance, Dawn, and, you know, being open to the universe, like how to find my balance and my joy and and just curious about getting getting better at that. 
How about you? Yeah, same, same. Um, you know, and a lot of the times when I have a podcast guest or, you know, I know I have an episode coming up that I need to record some of the days when I just don't have it in me and I'm just like, uh, it's exactly what I needed at the time. You know, I get in there and they just say two things and I'm like, oh, I am so glad that I did That's that That's happened today. to me too. Oh my gosh, yeah. yes, yes. I love yes, yes. that. And it just shows you that, you know, the, the things happen the way that they're supposed to, the way they're meant yeah. to. It's all lined up, but it is hard. There's so many things, you know, you want to promote your podcast and you want to put it on the socials and you really want to get, what? because to you, when you record an episode and it's so meaningful and you know that people would get a lot out of it, yes, it's like, you don't want to be like the little boy that cried wolf. You're like, no, really? I mean, it does. <laughs> but yeah, a really good one. <laughs> yes. So yeah, yeah, that we want to get it out to people so they can feel what we felt and, and help like I, like you, I want people to be able to be happier. Yeah. With more ease. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it is just going back to the simple, basic things, mm -hmm. you know, sitting, having a cup of coffee or whatever mm -hmm. you like, you know, and just not being in a rush and not trying to multitask to a fault. You know, I think that's exactly Dawn. our, our brains were not meant to multitask. I have learned that in a lot of my episodes about the brain and stuff. They're just not, yeah. And I can't be believe in. for so many years, like I bought into that and felt like it made me successful when I think it sure I had some success, but I didn't let myself enjoy it. I didn't feel proud. I was just on to the next thing. And that really depleted me and caused me a lot of stress. Yeah. Yeah. Again, we can do it to ourselves. So where, where can people find you? I mean, you do so many things, but where can people find you if they want to talk to you or get Thank some therapy? You. I'd love to connect with, with your audience at nolatherapy.com. It stands for New Orleans, Los Angeles therapy.com. And Dawn, if somebody wants to do a session and they mention you or your podcast, I'm happy to give them half off. It's typically $190 for a 45 minute session. So it'll be half of that by mentioning wow. you to new first time clients to see if, you know, maybe some of what we're talking about might help them. Oh my gosh. That is wonderful. Thank you so much for doing that for people. You're welcome. And they can just email me, reach out at NOLA therapy, Lisa at NOLA therapy.com. And I'm happy to honor that. That's awesome. So why, why do you live both places? Oh, well, I'm, I was born and raised in New Orleans. Okay. I love it. My whole family's there. I'm the yes. oldest of five, but I had never lived anywhere else. And when I was 43 years old, I was like, Los Angeles, like California. I just have to go. So I started coming out here. I met a friend who let me stay at her place to kind of check things out. And it's been 10 years that I divide my time. <laughs> Good for you. That's awesome. You get the best Thank of you. both worlds. Then. Thank That's you. great. It's been really great. Yeah. Well, I have just loved talking to you so much. I will Me definitely too. look at your book. I want to read it and find out all the information. It sounds amazing. But thanks so much for taking time out of your day to talk to me. I really do appreciate it. I know you're busy and um, it meant a lot. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you for your time, Dawn, in this show. I love it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. All right. We'll be in touch. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.